the structure in your life and then suddenly it's like well just do whatever you want and like sometimes it's not as straightforward as like I want to be a doctor I'm going to go study some people don't know what they want to do but they know they're expected to yeah know what they want to do do you find yourself winging your way through life hoping you'll figure it all out on the way Hello, it's me, Gabby Mendez, your 20s wing woman, and you're listening to the Talk 20s podcast. Here you'll find me chatting to influential 20-somethings on different topics that matter to you in your 20s and all the things we never got taught in school. This is your ultimate guide to adult life. So if you're ready, let's go. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Talk 20s podcast. If you're not already subscribed or following, make sure you click that button now to make sure that you never miss an episode of us in the studio. Today, I'm joined by pop sensation Bo Anderson. Her brand new single, 20s, is literally the theme tune for this podcast because it is so, so accurate. We're going to be talking all about pressure in your 20s, and it's probably going to be one of the most relatable episodes we've ever done of the podcast. So hello, Bo. Hello. Thanks for coming into the studio with us today. Thank you you're, for having me. You're here in Liverpool because you're on tour at the moment, which is I super am. exciting. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo. So uh, yeah. you're supporting uh, Tom Walker's tour. How's that yeah. going? It's so fun. He's mm. amazing. You know, when you hear a voice and you're like, wow, you just sound the exact same live. Yeah. Oh, that's Tom. <laughs> that's him. He's amazing. That's amazing. So you're obviously like finding your way all over the UK and and uh, performing. What's your favourite part of kind of being a, a singer and, a, and and performing in front of a large crowd? I think just like, well, especially after, the, not to bring up the pandemic, but especially after that. Yeah. I mean, I'm bringing it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, not to bring it up, but here we are. Yeah. Um, To be able to be in a room just full of energy. Yeah. And full of sweaty, smelly people. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Yeah. Like, it's so nice because it, it's been so long. And even before uh, lockdown, I didn't gig. I was like locked away in a studio writing music. Yeah. So I don't know. There's just something really special about people resonating with your music. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people know the songs as well, which I, I I get a bit weird. And I'm like, oh my God, you know my song? And then I like point at them. And I'm a bit weird. But yeah, there's just an, e- an energy that like nothing else can really touch. Mm. I think when you play live, there's nothing yeah. that compares to it. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's probably so nice that you've got that, you know, that new opportunity to kind of reach those people because honestly I think especially when I listen to your music like this song is so easy to pick up in about you only need to listen to it once and I would know the lyrics because they're so catchy and I I love your music but I can see why there's people in the crowd singing it because I think you know it's so catchy and especially your new song that's come out 20s honestly I only listened to it once and I already I I pick I do pick up songs quite fast but I was like this is like so spot on yeah tell us a little bit more about where the kind of origin of that song came from and why you wanted to write a song specifically about life in your 20s um I was just having a really stressful day and I think it'd been building up for a while and subconsciously Mm. I always think about it And it it was just getting a bit too much. And I was like, damn, I was like, your 20s are so hard. Like, you've got so many expectations and you put a lot of pressure on yourself. It's like you're expected to know what you want to do in life, which for me, lucky enough, I love music and that was okay for me. But you've got to know what you want to do. Is that definitely what you want Mm, to do? Well, you've got to go and study or, or, you know, start a job or do something. And it's a lot of pressure and you're expected to be social but you're expected to eat healthy and Mm -hmm. get up for work Mm -hmm. and like be good, but also meet your pals and go out drinking and socialize. And it's a lot of pressure. And I was just like, oh my God, this like, I'm just, it's just getting too much. And I just had this idea of being like, let's write a song called twenties. And the idea is that, I mean, I was, I was just very honest. I, I was, writing it just more is like a therapy I guess mm-hmm. of like I just need mm-hmm. to get this out because this is how I feel and it's really frustrating mm-hmm. so I wrote a song like not really with any plan to release it if I'm completely honest like, I think that would have been selfish if yeah. you'd have not released it <laughs> no, I know you would have been like what yeah <laughs> um because it is so spot on like we're going to talk about some of the kind of themes that you bring up in the song in particular because mm. obviously having written a song about it you can relate to everything that, that that's kind of um everyone experiences in their 20s and there's some kind of key points that you you talk about um but I think it's probably worth talking a little bit more about your journey to becoming an artist because I think it's really interesting to know people's backstory like where they're coming from so can you tell us a little bit more about your journey to kind of being in in the pop industry 
Yeah, um, so I'm from Edinburgh. <laughs> Can't tell. Can you tell by the accent? <laughs> I am Scottish. I'm actually wearing all blue. This is not intentional, but here we are. Um, <laughs> Reffin. Yeah. <laughs> Reffin Scotland. <laughs> um, yeah, so I grew up in Edinburgh. Uh, I was a dancer for a long time. I'm, I'm going to try and keep it brief and not yeah. go on too long. But I uh, was a dancer um, for years. Thought I'd moved to London for dance when I was a kid. And then I went to performance school for dance and acting and singing. Uh, and alongside that, I was very sporty and I did like swimming, I did trampolining, I did gymnastics. Mm-hmm. And I had a quite bad injury with trampolining. Uh, so I couldn't perf- I couldn't dance mm-hmm. for a while, for quite a while. But I still went to this performance school and they, they really encouraged me to sing. And I always loved music, but I used to just convey that through dance, I guess, mm-hmm. and movement. And um, yeah, so I got really into music. And also, when I was 11 years old, I went to see Dreamgirls. Mm. I don't know, with Beyonce yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Jennifer Hudson. Hudson yeah. And that was my first intro to like Motown. And I was like, <clears throat> mm. what is this? I was I like, know. this is amazing. Yeah. And then from there, I like went back and I listened to like Aretha Franklin, Donny Hathaway, like all the classics. And then kind of just fell in love with like anyone with a voice mm-hmm. um something that, that came from in here and that I was like yeah and no, I believe what they're singing like they mean that mm-hmm. it's not just like anything um and then it took me a long time to be like oh no you're like you could you could do this like mm-hmm. I was very like I was at this time it was like Adele was winning like the yeah. Brits so it was, it was like someone like you and I was like mm-hmm. nah can't it be me um but yeah, and then eventually I was like, no, nah, I'm going to go to London. Came to London when I was, was it 18? I think I just turned 19. Um, and I just kind of like dived right in. And mm-hmm. I went to BIM for a bit, which was like a music school. And then just was like, right, meet anyone and everyone you possibly can. And mm-hmm. kind of go in knowing that you're worthy of a, mm-hmm. a chance. Mm-hmm. And getting to the point where you are today, you signed by EMI Records, was that kind mm-hmm. of a difficult journey or did that kind of follow quite naturally from from studying in London? Um, yeah, it just kind of, I, I mean, I worked hard like, and, and I met everyone and anyone I could mm-hmm. and I tried to teach, because you don't really get taught about the industry. So I no. was learning on the go and just being like, yeah, cool, yeah, no, I <laughs> knew that. I knew that was a thing. <laughs> I understand Isn't that, that your 20s in general, to yeah. be fair? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Right, I've just came to the conclusion that I don't think anyone ever fully feels like an adult. No. I mean, that's don't. coming from a 20-odd-year-old, but, like, I don't think I don't. I think everyone is winging it, and no one, ha- no one has it all figured out. Nah. Like, they're lying I if really they say don't. that's true. I'm like, you're definitely lying. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually having a conversation about this just earlier. I was mm. like, no one knows what they're doing, really, do they? No. Like, no one does. No. So, yeah. I don't know what my point was, but... No one knows what they're doing. No one knows what they're doing. Um, well, I think one of the things that like we're gonna cover in the in in your twenties is is the fact that kind of nobody has it all figured out. And I think it's kind of one of those things that like you're maybe looking at managers, people you work with, people around you. And I think the only reason that they have, you know, the confidence that they do is because they've maybe done it a few times before. But the first time of doing anything is scary for everyone, right? Yeah. It's, I think it's yeah. one of those things that kind of, you know, the best way to do it is to just, I think, because a lot of people will look on a new situation and think, that's really scary. I don't know what I'm doing. Everyone else is going to look at me like I, like they know that I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just not going to do it. And that would be the solution. Yeah. But I think throwing yourself in at the deep end and going, I'm going to give it a go. And if I mess up, who cares? Yeah. Is the right attitude. Do you agree? hundred percent. I think the best thing you can do is put yourself in an uncomfortable situation yeah but like that's healthy yeah I think if you just live inside the box and 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 don't explore because you're scared that's not a good enough reason I I think personally like I was bloody terrified to move to London but Mm. I knew in my gut that it was right and I didn't know anyone and I, I was starting fresh and it's a big city to just be like right what what's what's the chat what's going on yeah but like it's, I would advise anyone that's unsure and s- s- a bit scared about change. It's so healthy, and it's I think it's yeah. it's the best. Like for me, moving to London is the best thing that I ever did with my life. Yeah, and even if it doesn't work out, 
it's, you still learn so much you from learn that experience. And you grow yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah. You do. You yeah. grow from it and you learn. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think another thing that comes with your 20s is a whole bunch of kind of new responsibilities that you never had before. Yeah. <laughs> You're Ooh. like, mum, dad pays my bills, you know, <laughs> and it's kind of all of those kind of things. And you kind of have to. All of a sudden, it feels like everything is thrown at you. So you're, yeah. you know, you're paying for rent, you're paying for bills, you're working, you're kind of wanting to progress in your career, but you want to have social life, you wanted to manage yeah. your health well. Like, oh. it feels like a lot. It feels quite heavy, right? It is a lot. It's yeah. a lot. And I think, I mean, luckily we live in a generation now where it's spoken about a lot more. Yeah. Whereas back in the, back in the day when, like, even when my parents were young, like, it was very much you can pr- you can press you like you shut you you keep everything, mm. you know I'm fine put on a brave face everything's good and I think that's the worst thing that you can do, um but I think as time goes on it's like everyone speaks about yeah. how they're feeling a lot mm. more and their issues and what's what and. Yeah, I think it's so important to do. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things about your 20s is that like there's no set formula for how yeah. life should go, right? No. You've taken a direction in the music industry. Yeah. I initially went out and was a teacher and then have navigated off into into kind of entrepreneurial life. But like we've taken two very separate paths mm. and there isn't like a set formula. And I think when you're in school, it's very easy to know I need to do this to get an A in this subject. I need to do this to do this. And it's very easy to know whether you're doing a good job because you're constantly graded, you're constantly told, and you know what you're working towards. When you step out into the big wide world, it's kind of like, well, the world is your oyster and you can do anything you want. But actually, I think that's quite daunting and quite scary because we've been in that structure for so long where it's like, this is the goal and this is all you need to do to succeed. And I think I see a lot of 20 somethings come out of that going, well, I don't really, I don't really get adult life because they've literally been just working to that very similar goal that is the same as your other people around them as well. Mm. They've all been working to that one very, very similar goal. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you kind of relate to or agree with? Yeah, totally. Like I think, you know you've got as you say like this structure in your life and then suddenly Mm. it's like well just do whatever you want and like sometimes it's not as straightforward as like I want to be a doctor I'm going to go study some people don't know what they want to do but they know they're expected to yeah know what they want to do Mm. and that's very that's a lot of pressure it's very stressful I have friends that studied started university courses and then left because they they just did it because it was like well that's what you do yeah just and they the didn't know step. they didn't yeah. they didn't know what they and then they left because they weren't happy there and it's it's there's just a lot of pressure to to know what you're what you're meant to be mm-hmm. doing but no one really as we say like no, no mm. one really does know what you're doing and that's okay as well I yeah. think everyone has their own path their own journey and mm-hmm. they'll find exactly where they're meant to be like I really do believe that yeah. and whether you start here and then you end up here or yeah. you might study one And it's thing. messy as well, right? It's yeah. not like linear because I think oh, everyone God. imagines imagines like you get your first job in your 20s mm. and then you get a promotion and then you get this and then you get this and it's like a very like, yeah. you know, climbing a staircase or a ladder and stuff like that. And actually, there's a really amazing um, podcast actually and, and um, kind of campaign called Squiggly Careers. And it's mm. so blooming true. Like everyone yeah. literally goes in all different directions and kind of no one has a very like very linear trajectory like everyone yeah. is kind of taking step 10 steps forward then maybe one step back and then yeah. 20 steps forward and stuff like that and it doesn't really matter where your journey kind of meanders or takes you yeah. because you're it's gonna make sense when you look back you're gonna be able to go ah that piece of the puzzle fits yeah. with that piece of the puzzle and if I hadn't have done that then I wouldn't have been here yeah. like you know I could look back at the time when I did two years teaching in a secondary school yeah. and I could be like what a waste of my time. Like, I wish I could scrub that from my memory. I wish I'd never done that. What a yeah. waste of my time. Yeah. But I wouldn't be able to like host a podcast or stand up and speak in, in a classroom. And, or I wouldn't even have the concept for what we're talking about for the podcast. Like, yeah. because I experienced all that whilst I was teaching, you know, supporting a group of sixth form students and them saying to me, you know, I don't have life figured out. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. Or I don't know, what do I do about credit yeah. cards, debit cards, rents? My mental health is not great. Like, and I was like, there is nothing that is there after you kind of university or whatever like your last bit of full-time education is that supports that so yeah that's how talk 20s was born now I could look back oh, on my wow. career and be like 
I want to scrub that out, but that would, that, no. that's the, that's the foundation. Yeah. And even if like, it doesn't, you know, I'm not really, I'm not teaching anymore and I'm not really using that day to day. The kind of the whole experience yeah. has got me where I am right now. Well, yeah. So I think for anyone who's kind of in a, in a job that they don't love right now, or they kind mm-hmm. of feel like they're going nowhere or they're just not really sure or very, very uncertain, yeah. like in, in two, three, four years time, you'll look back and be like, ah, it makes sense now. It all makes sense <laughs> now. It's so true though. Yeah. Like what you're saying, like if you hadn't taught, you wouldn't have seen those kids struggling. No. You maybe wouldn't have had the, the concept and the idea to do a podcast about it. Exactly. Um. So yeah, I do believe, you know, everything happens for a reason. Everything, everything happens everything. for a reason. Everything. Um. Now, one of, the, one of the things I think that makes your song so relatable is you talk a lot about overstressing. And, oh, yes. and I think... It's so natural as mm. a 20 something to kind of, am I doing this right? Mm-hmm. You know, what are my friends doing? Oh, Comparing yeah. yourself to others. Yeah. Um, and constantly worrying about about stuff. Has that been something that has kind of carried you through your 20s at all? Yeah, I think in, yeah, yeah, it has. Especially like as, as an artist that I've, I'm really lucky to have a lot of creative musicians and artists as mates and they're all amazingly talented but it is even for that like for as an artist you can have your little your brain like creeps it creeps in those little voices of like Mm. oh what are they doing Mm -hmm. oh they've got that oh should you have got that oh you didn't get that oh is that oh And and, and it's about trying to be like no you're on your own journey you've got your own things you know and then I've got like friends back home who are like buying houses and then, yeah. you know, settling down. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like single and I've had like the worst love life ever. And like, I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? But everyone has their own ways and journeys yeah. and paths. And I think it's just about trying to remind yourself of that because it's so easy to get those little voices in your head. Yeah, I think no matter how successful you are, everyone's human. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe that, like, everyone has these issues. No matter how successful you are, everyone has those voices in their head. And also, no matter how successful you are, there is always going to be someone who is doing that little bit more. That you're always going to have someone to compare yourself to. Yeah. No matter what. 100%. So just don't, really. Don't, yeah. Yeah, Because I'm sure people, like, will look at certain people, as you say, and think, wow, they're smashing life. They must be so happy. Mm. And I'm sure they've got their, they will be happy, but they've probably Mm -hmm. got their own issues yeah. and their own little voices in their heads saying oh well they're doing that and they're doing that and mm. you're not doing that mm, and definitely. yeah it's just about learning to try and shut that down a bit yeah. and yeah. I think one of, one of the things you mentioned there as well which kind of links back to a lyric in the song I think it's at 25 I'm sleeping on my friend's couch mm. but at 21 my parents bought their first house my parents bought a, they got married and bought a house 21 21 wow I'm like ooh yeah are you all right <laughs> what's wrong with you <laughs> But, do you know, I wouldn't change it. I think it's really good to live your life. Yeah. Ha- you got time for that. You got Well, if mm. you want to do that, amazing. Mm. But if you don't want to do that, don't... I know so many people that are in relationships or they're, they've settled down because everyone else is doing that. Yeah, they feel like they should. And it's like, well, I yeah. need to do that because everyone else... And that, yeah. that's what the pressure was back in the day when, like, my parents were young as well, I think, to say yeah. they're, they're not together anymore and, like, they're still friends and that but Mm -hmm. like I think there was a pressure to just like oh you get married and you like they didn't live together till they were married I'm like are you all right like I would never do that what if they're like a psycho or I don't know (laughs) but anyway that's another thing but yeah I think it's so important to not because if you get sucked into that you might make decisions that actually don't make you happy because you're trying to please other people it's so true I think when you're making the decisions it has to it has to be based on you and mm-hmm. it has to be based on what feels right to you and not yeah. because everyone else around you is telling you, you should get married, you should buy a house. Yeah. You should be doing this kind of job. I yeah. think that was off, that was my biggest fear of leaving teaching mm-hmm. because I was like, my mum, dad, they're going to think, you know, I've got this steady career and, you yeah. know, you going doing? on this trajectory. And I was like, mum, yeah. dad, I'm going to quit teaching. What? <laughs> what? You were literally on like a very clear path. And I think yeah. when, when someone tells you, you know, that you're not following the norm or you're mm-hmm. doing something different, like... Like I've learned to be okay with that, but yeah. it was hard at first to turn around and kind mm-hmm. of say that. And I wrote a blog post on a really old uh, blog that I have. Mm. And um, for some reason, 
if you type in leaving teaching in the UK, it's Does like it one, it's like number one on like Google. So <laughs> I get emails quite a lot from people who want to leave teaching as well. Right. And I get the, I got one yesterday actually. And it literally said, I'm just really scared what other people will think. Like I'm worried, I'm really worried that I won't find mm. another job. Or I'm really worried that, you know, the people around me won't understand why I'm doing this, but I'm absolutely miserable. And mm. that's just one profession. Like there's, I'm sure there's the cases for anyone who's yeah. in any different role, yeah. you know, doctors or, you know, um, pe- you know, people working in any kind of role, you know, not everyone is happy all the time. Yeah. But to get these kind of um, messages and to know that it's it's because they're worried what other people will think, yeah. but they're not happy. It's kind of like... Which is really sad. Yeah. But I do understand it. Yeah. I do. Um, but it is about... Oh, it's, 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 you do have to be brave and kind of be like, no, I'm going to be a little bit selfish. And I'm going to like... It's not bad to be selfish if it's something that's going to do... Like, as long as you're not hurting anyone in yeah, the process. exactly. You should be a bit selfish and do exactly what you want to do for you and mm-hmm. not give a, you know, whatever about what other people think. To, totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, also, yes. <laughs> do you coffee. feel like there's a timeline in your 20s that 30 is this massive milestone that yes. you kind of feel like me <laughs> at 30, I'm going to have everything all figured out. I'm yeah. going to be doing X, Y, Z in my oh career. My God. And I'm going to have totally made it by 30. I think there's this weird expectation that yeah. everyone thinks like that. Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? Do you know, I, people have told me that apparently your 30s are like the new 20s because like yeah. by then you're very comfortable in yourself. You're yeah. still young. You can do what you want. But you've kind of got a bit further in your yeah. life and in your journey with your job or with whatever and you're just more comfortable so like I'm like yeah. oh, where's the moment I'm for that. like <laughs> yeah but I hope it's, I hope they're right then we can I start talk fairies yeah yeah <laughs> so this but it's true I, I've heard that a lot like people just feel like a, a, a switch just kind of flips in your throat and you're like okay like you know I'm I'm, mm. I'm here with my life you know I'm happy or yeah. you know but I think a lot of people kind of put that milestone on themselves and they're like you know I want to have achieved X, Y, Z by this kind of age and, yeah. I, and I think that's kind of like you shouldn't look on life that way as kind of like a timeline and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. Planning ahead is a good thing because you can do whatever you need to do, whether that's saving or, Mm -hmm. you know, um, checking things off a list. You may want to, you may want to have kids. You may not. Like, I I think a little bit of planning in advance, but it it is good. But I also think that having too many expectations of what you're going to achieve by that is you're setting yourself up for a big kind of. Yeah. It just makes you miserable. It's like, there's that saying of like um celebrate the small wins yeah love that and like i think that's just such a ma- like it speaks volumes like mm. if you if if all like don't get me wrong i'm very ambitious and i want to do all these crazy things and like i'm sure i will one day but it's about the little things in life as well mm. because like i'm a person that's very i'm not easily satisfied like i I, I could do something great. I'm like, right, sound on next, the next one. thing. Yeah, I'm the same. I never take a moment to be mm. like, right, hang on. This is, that's really good. Like, yeah, well done. Enjoy that. Yeah. I'm very on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important to just take a moment to like celebrate the small wins. Mm-hmm. And even things like, sounds silly, but I really enjoy going for a coffee. And, and like, <laughs> sorry, coffee She's here. holding up a coffee cup. She, if she anyone's listening. Coffee, I know, I'm so sorry. I'm like, <laughs> But I love coffee and I love, before I go to the studio, I will always go for a walk, go for a coffee, have a moment for myself, enjoy the little things in life because before you know it, you'll be like in the nursing home. And I don't want to look back on life and be like, because I was what, just what going happened? for that goal, I everything I was else kind of, every yeah. Day because I was just waiting for that big goal that I'm trying to get. Yeah. And I, like, I've really had to like, try to be aware of that because I am very like yeah. need to get the next thing and the next thing and the next mm. thing um so yeah I think celebrate the small wins in, in those moments then where you are just grabbing a coffee and doing something for yourself how do you turn those little like that inner voice off that goes you should you know why because <laughs> I feel yeah. like a lot of people have this like you know yeah. why is that doing this you've got this goal and this goal and this goal because when I do something like for myself you know take a day out like that mm. I sometimes mm. find that the to-do list kind of creeps up in my head and I'm mm. like, oh, but you haven't done this and then you haven't done this and you haven't done this. And then I don't actually properly take the time for myself. Yeah. Um, 
And I think what you're saying is so, so, so valuable, you know, really try and switch off and kind of just enjoy the moments and stuff like yeah. that. But I think it, it is quite hard to sometimes put that voice to one side and go, no, today is just for me. Yeah. And I think I need to be better at that. Yeah, it, it definitely takes time and it takes practice. And it's 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 trying to remember that you are allowed to have a day off. You are only human. Yeah. and. I personally, a lot, like, if I get a bit overwhelmed, I think of things I'm grateful for. Yeah. Like, really small things. Like, I have a roof over my head. Mm -hmm. I have clean water at a tap that I can literally just yeah. get whenever I want. I can have a shower whenever I want. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to worry about when my next meal is. Mm -hmm. I could go to the shop and get food if I want it. Mm -hmm. And when you think of things like that, it's so simple, but it does make it like well it's just like a first world problem mm -hmm. like it is totally it, it really puts things into perspective because I sometimes get overwhelmed and like even when I have a day off my phone will still be going off and yeah can you do this can you do that can you do this can you do that mm -hmm. which is even more makes it like your head yeah. tick away mm -hmm. but yeah I think just little things that you're grateful for it mm -hmm. really does put it into into perspective like yeah. that you are actually really lucky and that it's okay yeah and like it's okay to feel these things because you're human and everyone's mm -hmm. human and everyone feels these things and it's natural but it's about just you know balance and mm -hmm. yeah can kind of trying to control it to a certain extent mm -hmm. definitely so we talked about it at the top of the podcast but Getting out of your comfort zone mm. is probably one of the best things that you can kind of do in your 20s. So when you're not chilling and taking time out for you, yeah. it's saying yes to the things that are a little bit scary. Um, is there a moment or time where you kind of feel like you've really, really pushed yourself out of your comfort zone and you literally had to kind of do new things that you weren't expecting? Uh, yeah. I uh, So I, I didn't, I released music in the pandemic, so I hadn't had mm. really any gig experience. Um, I, I like as a kid, I was always on stage dancing, and yeah. I was I was used to being performing, and I love it. But I hadn't done it in a long time, and um, I went on this uh, TV show in Berlin. I think it was called uh, Late Night Berlin, and never done a TV show before. And uh, David Guetta was was the guest. Oh and, my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was just standing like where you are, and they introduced me, and I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> He's literally going to be, and they're like, da da da, da Island, Bo Anderson. And I start performing. And as he's introducing me, I'm like, that's David Quayle. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I've got to perform. I was like, Ooh. <laughs> and my heart's like going like that. And I'm like, chatting, like, right. It, this is all in split seconds. And I'm like, right, come on. I'm like, just like, come on, you're Bo, come on. <laughs> Get on with it. Look good because you didn't want to look daft in front of David. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so that was quite a like, yeah. You got to like pull yourself together and deliver. Yeah. And that was really scary. That was really, un not uncomfortable, but uncomfortable. I was out of my comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, out of your comfort zone. So uh, yeah. TV, like cameras everywhere and like, yeah. look like you're having a great time <laughs> even though you're pooing your pants. Like, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, that was, sorry, yeah, yeah. That, that's what popped into my head. No, I, I think that it's scary. I, and I think maybe, <laughs> maybe not David, David Getter, but like, Everyone has a moment in their life that they can yeah. relate to where they felt so out of their depth. Yeah. Like, oh my God, like, should like should I even be like, be here? Like, is it me? Is like, okay? is this for me? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then having yeah. to put on and just being like, I, I know that I don't really like this saying, but it's kind yeah. of like fake it until you make it. But I don't really oh, like that saying. I kind yeah. of, I kind of probably prefer like just, you know, have I a bit more confidence in yeah, yourself. I was going to say confidence. Have a bit more belief. I think like, it's not about faking it because realistically, we've already said no. everyone is faking it to a certain extent. Uh, no, no one has it all figured out. Didn't. But it's just like believe in yourself a little bit more because you're 100%. deserving of being there. Like, yeah. you know. It's so, and, and people feed off that energy. So like, mm. if, like even in the early days when I came to London, I started meeting all these A&Rs at labels. I didn't have management. I was, I was meeting lawyers. I was meeting all these people that yeah. like, I didn't have a clue what I was doing, yeah. but I knew my worth. Not not in an egotistic way at all. I'm the most humble person. Like I'm I'm mm. very grounded. My friends keep me grounded. I would never, you know, be like, I'm amazing. <laughs> but like, it's more just knowing your worth and going yeah. into a room and being like, you should like you should want to, like I know that I'm good. You should want to work with me. Definitely. And I think that is like the fake it till you make yeah. it trait of like you're not yeah. being fake, but you're. 
it's just having that confidence. You're believing in yourself. Yeah, you got to yeah. believe in yourself. Because how, I always say it, how, and I say this to any artist that are, of my friends, I'm like, how is someone else going to believe that you are worthy of putting effort into if you don't believe in mm. yourself? So how are they going to believe in you? Yeah. You need to start believing in yourself first. Yeah to get any progression I really mm, do believe that definitely um well we're gonna chat a little bit more about your 20s in general and um we always try to ask someone about a time that they've completely messed up or they've mm. made a mistake but it taught you like a huge lesson about something that you can look back on and go oh yeah I'm really actually glad that I experienced that bit of failure or that really big mistake because actually it taught me this and so we're mm. kind of discussing the fact that like you shouldn't really be afraid of like failing at something yeah um I've got like two different examples like I that this has just popped into my head. When I was like 14, just started singing, mm -hmm. went for, I think, The Voice or The X Factor, one of these like TV shows. Mm -hmm. And as a 14 year old, that's quite scary. And I got, got, didn't get to the TV round, which I'm actually quite happy with. It's all worked out how it's meant to and all that. Yeah. But when they said no, my wee heart was like destroyed. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm rubbish. Like, as a little 14 year old, and that really, that's quite young, like, example, yeah. but that feeling in your heart of like, oh my God, am I not good enough? Like, yeah. should I have done that? I don't know. But yeah, because I should have. Because I think it, a lot of people really fear rejection, don't they? Yeah. And it's just like someone saying that you're not it or you're not right, ready right now or something yeah. like this. I think, I think. I think the way you should look at like rejection is like redirection. So it wasn't meant for you to go on yeah. X Factor or no. The Voice. Yeah. It was meant for you to go this path yeah, was... and look how it's working out for you now. Totally. But like, it's kind of pointing you in a different kind of way. But I think fear of rejection is massive. Fear of rejection yeah. in when it comes to dating, fear of rejection when it comes yeah. to jobs, fear of re rejection, oh my God. you know, when you're trying to get a mortgage, like all yeah. of these kind of things, everyone is petrified of it. It's, it's like everyone, people, is petrified. everyone wants to people yeah. please and everyone yeah. wants to, you know, get yeah. there. And I think... But it's 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 like I've I've been told no, I've been told I'm not good enough, I've been told I'm mm. overstyled or whatever, like my voice is too this or that, blah, 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 blah. But it does make you tougher. And I think mm. if you turn that into like instead of taking the rejection in a way that's like, oh, well, I may as well give up on that because one person bobbed down the road said that I wasn't good enough. Yeah. Or whatever take that and use that as like fire and ignition to kind of yeah you know do what you want to do and just mm -hmm. learn from it and mm -hmm. be willing to learn and have a little bit of a tough skin I guess and, and like but in a good way of like helping that yeah to drive you to do what you you want to do definitely whether that's in an interview or yeah what, whatever your passion is whatever it is you want yeah. to do you said you had another example what was your other one what was my other example <laughs> oh god here we go now I'm like yeah that's no, <laughs> It's gone. I get so sidetracked. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking about this and I go off on that and um, it might come back to me. No. Nah, she's gone. She's, she's gone. gone. She's, she's up there somewhere. She's gone. She's um, so one of the things that obviously we've been chatting a lot about on the podcast is that no one is perfect. Everyone is working through something no matter what stage they are in their life mm. and everyone is trying to get better at something. Yeah. What is it that you're working on at the moment that you want to improve and kind of get out of your comfort zone or, or things like that? Ooh. Um, I want to... So I've done a, a few uh, support tours now and like I've, it's just given, like, it's scary, but it's amazing. Mm. Um, Like I did some shows with Ella Air and she's, she's incredible. And the stages, like I've never performed on stages like that before. And that to like, before going on stage, I'm like, yeah. it's really nerve wracking. And I'm like, why did I do this to myself? But then <laughs> as soon as you get out there, there's just something about it that's so amazing. So I think for me, kind of just keeping going with that and getting I'd love to do bigger shows and mm -hmm. that's kind of my thing at the moment I think because I've I've been in the studio a lot and I've been working on a lot of of new music which I can't wait to share with the world and mm -hmm. so yeah I think for me priority at the moment is just like getting on you know big support tours and just 
playing yeah. anywhere and everywhere. Anyone that wants to listen, I'll sing to them. <laughs> well, we'll listen. We'll be in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we always end the podcast with the same question that we ask every single mm-hmm. guest. And it's if you could look back to 20-year-old Bo mm-hmm. and just give her like one piece of advice, what would you say to her? I would say trust your gut um, and know your worth. When I was 20, I really didn't think I was that worthy of like, not so much the music side of thing, but like worthy of like love and like a good relationship. Mm -hmm. And I kind of settled for, um, yeah, I just settled for some things that weren't right for me because I didn't really, I was like, oh, well, yeah, that's fine. So I think listen to your gut with any situation and your intuition because it's Mm -hmm. always right. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah, just know your worth. Know that you're worthy of great things Mm -hmm. and don't settle for less and don't settle for people that make you feel less. Yeah. Like surround yourself with people that lift you up Mm -hmm. and make you feel good. I love that. That's some really, really wise (laughs) advice. Um, So where can we listen to your music? Uh, Tell us a little bit more about your song 20s because for me, it's like on repeat at the moment. And I went away with the girls at the weekend (laughs) and I was like, girls, listen to this, this and this. And they're like, we're all dancing in the kitchen, like screaming it. So it's a really, really amazing song. And, you know, all of your music is amazing. But tell us a little bit more about where we can listen. Uh, So it's on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube Music. All, all those all mm-hmm. those ones Apple Music um, and yeah it's um, what I just yeah as I say like I just wrote it about the stresses like I, I was just I actually wrote it I write music is like it's like my therapy yeah because I'm very bad at talk I'm getting better but I'm very bad at just suppressing my feelings and not talking about things yeah and cracking on my life and just toughing up and getting on with it which is really not good so music's like my, that's my way of projecting how I feel. And 20s was actually never going to come out. Um, like genuinely, Aren't you glad it did? <laughs> genuinely. Like, yeah, like I am. And everything happens for a reason. But like, because sonically, it's not as much mm. my kind of thing, mm-hmm. which is all good. Like, it's totally fine. But I wrote it more of like, oh, I need to get this out. It's mm-hmm. really, you know whatever and then put it on TikTok I put loads of demos on TikTok yeah. and then it just resonated with people and mm-hmm. I was like oh damn I'm like other people feel that's how too. that's how I know about you from TikTok like, really yeah <laughs> absolutely because I loved so it and I heard this, this song and I was like oh. whoa this is so relatable yeah. like so yeah I mean it's it's natural and I think that's the nicest thing about it is I didn't I wasn't like I need to write a massive song yeah. that everyone's gonna love I genuinely wrote it from a place of like real stress mm. mm-hmm. and like worry and and it, it's just resonated with so many people which yeah makes, so after you yeah. finish listening to this podcast apart from yeah. listening to the rest of the talk 20s podcast yeah. as well definitely go and search on whatever platform and and listen to the the song because I think you're going to see what we're talking about when you listen to it <laughs> you're also doing a headline show which is really um, exciting tell us more about that and where we can get tickets um so it's in May the 26th. Correct. My brain's like, <laughs> when is it? In uh, Camden Assembly yeah. in London. Um, and they are on Live Nation. They're online. I've got a link in my little Instagram, mm-hmm. TikTok as well. You can get them there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I'm so excited to play full band, new songs that will be coming out this year. Mm-hmm. So, Amazing. Including 20s. So very excited. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, Bo. Thank you so much for coming into the studio today. Thank Good you. luck with the rest of, of the tour that you're on with Tom Walker at the moment. And yeah, we've loved chatting to you today. Thank you for sharing all of your wisdom with us. Aww. And if you're listening to the podcast right now, don't forget to click that subscribe or follow button so you can follow all of our episodes of us in the studio. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Talk 20s podcast. I hope it inspired you in some way and pops a little pep in your step for this week. Got a spare minute? It would mean the absolute world if you could subscribe, leave a review or share this episode with a friend. We're on a mission to help as many 20-somethings navigate their 20s as we can and we really cannot do it without your support. We also love to hear from you. You can find us on all platforms via the handle at Talk 20s. And if you're struggling with something in your 20s that we haven't already covered in the podcast, DM us and let us know so we can cover it in a future episode. And for more stories of inspiration and resources to help you make the best of your 20s, head to our website, talk20s.com.